So you got a drum track, somebody gave it to you, it's all broken out, it's an audio, and you want to replace some of the sounds. Uh, here's a technique that might help you out. So I've got a kick here, a snare here, and I got some hats, right? Obviously I played them in by ESS24, but they are all split out. If I solo the kick, it's just the kick. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a software instrument. And I'm going to have a look here for, let's see, I'm just going to open up a GarageBand drum kit for now. Let's see, where is it? Drum kits, stereo. And I'm going to load up something that is not that original kit, something completely different, like a hip-hop kit. Now, I keep that track selected, but I'm going to double-click on the kick. That opens up the sample editor down below. Now, I see each transient and how it lines up on the grid here, but what I want to do is I want to actually create MIDI notes that relate to each transient of the kick. Then I'm going to take those MIDI notes and I'm going to reassign them to a different drum kit. So I'm going to go to Factory, Audio to Score, and it gives me a little template here uh, that allows me to see where the transients are going to line up. I see there's a transient here, here's the, these transients, and basically the vertical that you see is going to be velocity. So it looks like everything's lined up pretty well. Uh, if you adjust the t attack range, it'll grab other transients. Um, granulation is how many, um, like let's say you have a complex transient, it might put multiple markers per transient, but it's essentially, or multiple notes per transient. But I'm going to try this setting and see what happens. I hit process and it creates a score based off of the notes that I gave it. So I'm going to close the score window and I'm going to close my sample editor and then if I double click on this MIDI region I see that that's where it placed my kicks. Now why did it place them on E1? Well what happens is it's trying to determine it actually intelligently analyzes the kick sample and it tries to figure out the pitch and then it assigns the note to the pitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, there's a couple things I could do. I see that it put them all pretty much on the same pitch. So the easiest way to do it is to click on the key that corresponds to where it placed them. I'm going to hold Option and click the down arrow until it reaches C1. And then I'll grab the rest of the notes and have them, I'm going to hold Option and hit the down arrow key to move the notes down to C1. And now what I've done is I've effectively replaced the audio from the other kick. I'm going to mute the kick. And I'll pop a little compressor on there. So even though it's a hip hop kick, it's playing in exactly the same spot as the other kick. And since you have it as MIDI, you can quantize it and piss off any drummer that you ever work with. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, um, there's, a, there's a number of different studios where they actually keep libraries of their favorite kick drums and things like that online, so that when somebody brings in a song and they need it um, brought up to commercial level, um, they don't go through the process of re-recording this person's drum kit. They just go and they find the best samples and reassign them. Yeah, it's cheating. It's so much fun. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. And girls.